thank the FAPESP and uh, also for the opportunity to uh, show results uh, in which we are using genomic as a tool for discovering genes that are implicating in cancer. Uh, cancer, all cancer is caused by somatic mutation. And uh, somatic mutation uh, is, uh, happens during uh, cell division and can be stimulated by ex exogenous, endogenous, mutagenic exposure, and also for germline mutation, like mutation BRCA1, BRCA2, that are genes that are involved in DNA repair. Uh, and that in mutation by BRCA1, BRCA2 is associated with a higher risk to developing cancer. Uh, mismatch repair genes that are associated with the colorectal cancer, and CDKN2A that is associated with the melanoma. Then germline mutation in combination with exogenous and exogenous mutation, mutagen exposure can cause somatic mutation. And the somatic mutation in body cells. And uh, the tumor evolution is consequence of somatic mutation accumulation. And uh, uh, when a mutation happen in a cell and confer uh, a selective growth advantage to the cell in, in which the mutation occur, it's called uh, driver mutation. And uh, driver genes are genes that uh, uh, harbor a driver mutation and uh, that uh, normally uh, there is some evidence in the literature that the driver gene is normally uh, the genes that belong to three cellular process, cell fate, cell survival, and genome maintenance. And then uh, this, uh, here is a representation uh, and this representation has no intention to uh, discuss about the linear or non-linear uh, tumor evolution model. It's just uh, to, to show you when a cell uh, has a driver mutation, this driver mutation um, has, the cells has, uh, can duplicate more effici efficiently because the cells has a selective growth advantage. And the, the process of uh, uh, mutation con is continuous, is very complex. And uh, the result uh, is an accumulation of uh, cells in uh, uh, tumor very heterogeneous with uh, uh, cells with the driver mutation that is expected to, to be in higher number than the cells with the passenger mutation, because the passenger mutation are mutation that does not confer uh, selective growth, uh, sorry, uh, selective growth advantage for the cells. And uh, uh, then is the result of a solid tumor. And the, the, gen the advances of genomic anal uh, analysis uh, nowadays uh, enable us to have the, uh, to access this uh, repertoire of a mutation that uh, uh, happen in a solid tumor. And uh, uh, the, with the advance of this uh, technology, today we are able to know which mutation has this tumor, it, how frequent is this mutation. It is the pretty uh, very well accepted that uh, mutation in higher frequency is a pot can be uh, classified as potential driver mutation. And uh, then as background before I start uh, to show you some results is the somatic mutation is consequence of infidelity of DNA replication machinery. Mutations that lead to a defective protein involving crucial cellular functions may trigger cancer. Biological processes that are operative in, in tumor can be at least partially revealed by knowing it is somatic mutational landscape. And uh, today, the advances in genomics, we can access the causally implicated genes in cancer develop 
and progression, and disclosed biomarker for diagnostic, prognostic, and targeted therapy. My group has been working, has been using genomic tools uh, for a lot of uh, tumor type because I work in a cancer institution. institution. But uh, I have uh, some uh, projects. Uh, my main projects are in breast cancer and Wilmes tumor. And uh, in breast cancer today, I'd like to show some results that my group has in uh, BRCA1 mutation triple negative breast tumor. Uh, breast cancer. Uh, in Brazil, our estimative for 2004 was um, almost 60,000 breast cancer, and uh, the hereditary breast cancer accounts for 10% of uh, all breast cancer cases. And the most important uh, hereditary syndrome of uh, uh, hereditary breast cancer is hereditary breast and ovarian cancer. That is an autosomal dominant disease where BRCA1 and BRCA2 are the two most important genes. And uh, both genes are part of the complex uh, uh, that repairs double strand breaks in DNA and is involved in genomic stability. Uh, my group has been working in screening women with the clinical criteria for hereditary breast cancer, and we found, depending on the criteria that you use to to have the, to include these patients in our uh, projects, we uh, normally found 25% of pathogenic mutation in this woman. And uh, in Brazil, the BRCA1 uh, is in, in the, not Brazil, because we are normally using just uh, uh, patients from AC Camargo and from other institutions that we are collaborating with. But BRCA1 is the most prevalent mutagenic gene in Brazilian patients with clinical criteria for hereditary breast cancer. And, uh, triple negative breast cancer has a very close association with the BRCA1 germline mutation. Uh, the negative breast cancer is a, a subtype of breast cancer that is negative for progesterone and estrogen receptor expression and also for expression and amplification of HER2. Uh, uh, there is a this connection between BRCA1 and triple negative comes from the both side. Uh, for example, uh, women uh, who carries BRCA1 germline mutation uh, predominantly develops uh, BRCA, uh, triple negative breast cancer. And uh, in the literature, there is uh, data showing 60 to 80 percent of BRCA1 mutation carriers develop a triple negative. In our uh, e study, we found 72 percent, that is a very similar rate. By the other side, triple negative has a high. A significant percentage of BRCA1 mutation. And the, the, in the literature, it is a very wide range of this percentage, since 80 to 30 percent. In our previous uh, uh, work, in which we work with a very small cohort of patients with a diagnosis before 35 years old, we found uh, the, the women that was, were diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer, 50% was a carrier of BRCA1 germline mutation. And then uh, uh, our next question was to determine the real preva prevalency of BRCA1 mutation in triple negative breast cancer. It is uh, just uh, one single institution study because we use just samples from AC Camargo. And uh, we search for loss of uh, um, function mutation BRCA1 gene. We screening uh, 103rd triple negative breast cancer. We use uh, PGM. We use the next generation sequence PGM and AmpliSeq BRCA panel. And we found 11. We include uh, women of a different age at the diagnostic here and we found 11%. Uh, 
the most of this uh, mutation and the, to define if this mutation, the status of the mutation, if it is germline or somatic, we uh, analyze the blood or normal tissue of these samples. And we found the most of the uh, mutation that we found was of germline status, and just 1.5% were somatic BRCA1 point mutation. Then uh, we divided this group of uh, triple negative in BRCA1, oh, something, okay. <laughs> Uh, in BRCA1 mutated triple negative and BRCA1 wide type triple negative, and uh, we detected that the age of the diagnosis, as expected, was uh, was uh, earlier in the group with triple negative mutated uh, with BRCA1 mutated. And then we divide our cohort in women diagnosed under 45 years old in women uh, diagnosed between 40 and 50 and higher than 50. I'm sorry for this slide. And we found that a higher mutation rate in the group of women diagnosed under 40 years old. The, the mutation rate is 25, 13, and 3.5%. And uh, these uh, results show that women diagnosed with a triple negative before 50 years old are under risk to harbor germline mutation BRCA1 gene, also in Brazil. And uh, this is very important because this is, uh, there is, uh, are a lot of implication for the women and for uh, their family. And then uh, triple negative it corresponded to 15 to 20 percent of all breast cancers. Uh, is a very aggressive tumor with a poor prognosis and overall survival, higher probability of relapse, preferentially in uh, solid tissue, uh, higher probability, uh, no target, uh, there is no target or hormone therapy is available. The women are submitted to systemic chemotherapy. And it's a very heterogeneous group uh, regarding the response for uh, chemotherapy treatment. Then uh, we, uh, our objective was to investigate the molecular mechanism that outlined the two groups of triple negative, the one with BRCA1 mutated and the other with BRCA1 wide type. And uh, uh, then uh, we uh, analyzed the mutation repertoire of these samples using exome sequencing. Uh, for doing that, uh, we use tripped, tripled samples. That means we use a blood, normal tissue, normal tissue, a DJ center normal tissue, and a tumor tissue. Then for those that are not familiar with, uh, with uh, this methodology, exome sequencing uh, enable us to, to check the exons uh, of the protein coding uh, genes. Uh, when you do exome sequencing, we, we are uh, evaluating the uh, practical all gene repertoire, the protein gene repertoire. Uh, then uh, the first uh, uh, analysis that we did was to see the uh, pattern of somatic mutation in normal and uh, uh, tumor, in triple negative tumor. We analyzed just the mutation that uh, was in the uh, coding sequence that really affected the protein function. Uh, five minutes, okay. Then. Then uh, we analyze it just, uh, we divide the mutation, somatic mutation that we found that uh, was not present in blood in two groups, high frequent mutation and the low frequent mutation. The high frequent mutation we classified as drivers and the low frequent mutation we classified as passenger. What we detect is that uh, the BRCA1 wide type has a higher proportional uh, rate, higher proportion of frequency 
of uh, uh, high frequent mutation that is the driver in comparison to tumor. In the normal, we didn't find any difference. That uh, suggests that uh, triple negative uh, with a BRCA1 mutate has proportionally lower number of driver mutation that at least uh, means that this uh, tumor, the two groups of tumor has distinct the process of tumor evolution. Uh, what we also uh, observed, we did the whole genome DNA methylation analysis and uh, in both groups, and we observed that the triple negative without uh, BRCA1 mutation has higher level of high methylated uh, promoter hypermethylate, hypermethylate uh, CPG. Uh, and uh, we found also a peak of hypermethylation in the region of chromosome uh, 17 where the BRCA1 is located. We are working on that now to see if in the triple negative without BRCA1 mutation, if they really have a hypermethylated uh, BRCA1. Uh, just to remind you, hypermethylation is correlated with the gene silence. That means that uh, suggests that the BRCA1 is uh, at least lower expressed in, in this group. Okay, I don't have time to, to show the summary, but uh, just very quickly, I have other uh, research line uh, in Wilmis tumor. Wilmis tumor is embryonic kidney neoplasia. 10% is associated with the germline mutation, and 15% uh, has experienced relapse. It has a very good rate of uh, survival. Um, uh, Wilmis tumor differs from renal adult cancer in the number of somatic mutation is much smaller than adult renal cancer. Uh, it is a result of uh, interruption of the kidney differentiation in the gain of malignant uh, uh, potential. Uh, my uh, group has been working with uh, Wilmis tumor uh, using gene expression. Uh, we could identify some important genes that we, we uh, judge that is a driver gene is involved in interruption of uh, uh, the, uh, kidney development. Uh, in this work, we search for a somatic mutation. There are very few genes that had been identified as casually involved with the uh, Wilmis tumor. We use this experimental design. We analyze the tumor, blood of the child, and of the parents. We use uh, exome sequencing and we detect a somatic point mutation in Drosha gene. Uh, Drosha encodes a nuclear RNA protein uh, that plays a central role in microRNA biogenesis pathway, is very important for gene expression regulation. That is a very important mechanism for kidney differentiation. And uh, this mutation that we found uh, was located in a residue and a domain uh, and the affect amino acid uh, was one of the four acid residue that uh, uh, is the, the res residue when magnesium uh, linked in this residue and is essential for RNA3 uh, catalytic activity. And because of this, and the because this is a very conservative region be, uh, among the eukaryotes, then we analyze if this uh, point mutation could be a recurrent mutation. If for our good surprise, this mutation was a recurrent mutation, we found in 10% of uh, uh, more than 200 Wilmis tumor that we analyzed, and we analyzed the whole domain, we could found other types of mutation in very important domain. But this one was the most uh, frequent mutation. Then uh, 
we analyze not only the Drosha mutation, but uh, we uh, analyze the other genes that are very important for microRNA biogenesis. Uh, and then we uh, use a panel of genes where the, we put in this, include in this panel the core genes of microRNA biogenesis and other genes that were already associated with Wilmis tumor. And we analyzed that almost 70 uh, frozen uh, Wilmis tumor and we could uh, find more than 30% of the, of the Wilmis uh, samples uh, who exhibit a pathogenic mutation in some of these uh, genes that belong to microRNA uh, biogenesis members. And uh, the higher proportion, the higher frequency that we found, uh, we concluded that uh, uh, the impairment of microRNA maturation may play a, ve a very important role in Wilmis tumor. And uh, we did uh, other experiment just to add the, the information about the function of the Drosha with this specific mutation. I don't have time to show you, but we analyzed uh, samples, uh, Wilmis tumor samples, and we observed that the samples that express this Drosha mutated gene protein uh, uh, lead to a down-regulation, a predominant down-regulation of uh, uh, microRNA. And we, in order to check it in a more uh, control experiment, we, uh, anal we did a cell line assays and we could prove that uh, really the Drosha could not uh, very good uh, cleave the microRNA, and this microRNA cannot be recognized by Dicer, and the effect is the downregulation of the mature mac microRNA. I had uh, experimented to support this, but uh, we published this in, ju in June uh, in Nature Communication, and a few weeks later, other group uh, pub submitted the similar result than we uh, had published, and uh, they could uh, confirm all results that we had. We are very happy that we are, were the first one, but uh, uh, they could uh, find this mutation, the similar mutation in other a cohort of Wilmes, they also found a mutation in other genes of the microRNA uh, uh, core genes, the other genes that are involved in microRNA biogenesis, and uh, they also found that, uh, uh, let me see here, that they also found a, a significant downregulation of mature uh, microRNA. And uh, then uh, Drosha, uh, we could detect that Drosha, this mutation is a driving mutation in Wilmis tumor. And uh, uh, just to have I one time? Uh, it, then we know that, uh, that, uh, that the, we have now uh, genomic uh, advances in genomic that we can detect a mutation even in very low quantity of DNA. And it's very well uh, established in the literature that an active tumor liberates DNA in a uh, fluid body. Then we are uh, focused now in liquid biopsy, biopsy for monitoring treatment of a Wilmis tumor and the triple negative breast cancer. Uh, the, the treatment that we follow here in Brazil in Wilmis tumor is uh, to do 
pre-chemotherapy before the surgery. And the monitoring this patient is, the monitoration of this patient is very important. What we are investing now is in detecting in urine and also in plasma the uh, somatic mutation that we uh, already have using this panel of genes. And uh, we also uh, do the similar strategy because we could use exome sequence, but it is not, uh, it's very expensive to have the coverage that we really need. Then we prefer to use uh, a panel, but for using a panel, we have to have a very, uh, the genes that we, we have in our panel have to be very associated with the tumor that we are studying. And, uh, in triple negative, we have these genes that we select of our uh, first of the study that I showed you, and we are also select some genes in the liter literature because triple negative is just a few patients respond well for chemotherapy. The most of them does don't respond very very well, and we you we. We will use this strategy for monitoring uh, response to chemotherapy. And uh, we think that uh, we can uh, do a very, we can have a very comprehensive analysis of the mechanism of sensitivity and the resistance to treatment. Uh, sorry, uh, I think I, I am already late. Thank you. And uh, I'd like to thank FAPESP. And uh, the people of my lab, my former student, uh, collaborators of Ersi Camargo, and uh, my external collaborator. Thank you very much.